you want to secure your website with an SSL certificate, in this ADBS tutorial, we're going to walk through how to secure a free SSL certificate through ADBS Certificate Manager. I'm Thomas with Brain Trust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack, please subscribe below for new content. For newer developers, an SSL certificate encrypts traffic from the browser to the server. Anytime you see HTTPS in the URL or that little green lock, that's what's happening there. HTTPS is the secure form of HTTP and is supported by all major servers and browsers. It's a best practice to always encrypt your traffic with an SSL certificate. There are several options when creating an SSL certificate, so why use AWS Certificate Manager? First and foremost, certificates are free. If you get a certificate from somewhere like GoDaddy or others, you can pay upwards of $100 for a regular certificate per year or $300 per year for a wildcard certificate, the type of certificate we're going to be creating. With that said, you can get certificates for free from services like Let's Encrypt. But if you're new to creating certificates, these can be difficult to generate and problematic to renew. Meaning if you don't remember to renew annually or set up a process recurring to renew automatically for you, this will literally take down your website. This leads into our next point. AWS Certificate Manager certificates are auto-renewing. So you, it's just one less thing you have to worry about or manage or that could potentially take down your website in the future. Lastly, they're extremely easy to hook up to AWS services. One last thing that I think is important to know before we get started is that AWS Certificate Manager is a point of vendor lock-in. And what I mean by that is you can't take this Amazon generated SSL certificate with you if you decide to go to Google Platform or Azure. You don't receive this certificate file and you don't have access to the certificate file. As an AWS certified developer, sysops admin, solutions architect, that's not something I'm worried about. I'm not trying to brag so much to say that I'm invested in the AWS platform and that's the platform that's right for me. What I mean by this is I'm willing to take the trade-off of vendor lock-in for price and convenience because I know I'm not going to leave. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. So the first step is that you're going to log into your AWS console. There's one requirement. You're going to need to own the domain or be in contact with the domain owner as you're going to need to validate ownership of this domain to create the SSL certificate for it. Uh, if you happen to be following along with our Route 53 tutorial, this is going to be very simple to verify ownership by adding a few CNAME records. So to get started, let's navigate to the Certificate Manager by clicking into Find Services and typing in Certificate. Before we get started, I want to mention that you want to check the region here. I recommend you create your certificate in the US East 1 or North Virginia region. The reason for using this region is that you may want to use Amazon's CDN product CloudFront down the road. CloudFront has a hard requirement that if you want to use a custom domain name, that this domain must have an SSL certificate on it, and that SSL certificate must exist in the North Virginia region. So it's just easy right out of the gate to, to start in this region, and then if you end up wanting to use this or not, that, then you're not negatively impacted, and you can just kind of move forward from there. So I just wanted to point that out real quick before we get started to save you some future headaches if you end up going down that path. So next we're going to click uh, get started to provision a new certificate. We're going to click request certificate. Here's where you have the opportunity to type in your domain names. So first we're going to type in the wildcard, which is an asterisk, dot, and then the domain name. In our case, we're going to use aws-rails.com. And then we're going to add one more domain name for the uh, naked domain name, aws-rails.com. I always start by including the wildcard domain name. Uh, that's just a lesson learned through hard experience. Uh, previously, I used to certify very specific domain names, say like www and then also the naked domain name. But using a wildcard domain name instead gives you a lot more flexibility. Say in the future you'd like to create a subdomain like app.aws-rails.com or mail.aws-rails.com. You don't have to go through the process of creating a new certificate and waiting on an email or, or waiting to validate in Route 53. 
you just have availability to those and it's already secure. So it's just kind of a nice way to prevent uh, additional future work. With that being said, let's click next. Here you can choose DNS or email to validate. In our case, we're gonna stick with DNS validation. If you choose email validation, you don't get to specify the email address. The address used are the email addresses associated as the technical contacts and owners of the domain at the time of registration. So you need to make sure you have access to that domain. Either you are the owner and you can just wait for that to come through or the, the actual owner would need to forward you that email to, to be able to move forward and verify ownership of the domain. Next, you can choose to add tags. We'll just add yes, Rails, SSL and click review. Okay, once you've completed the form, you can confirm your request. Now you have to go through the validation step. You can see once expanded the domains that it's actually the same record here. And all you need to do is add a CNAME record with a very specific name and value into root 53 and you're good to go. That'll, that'll actually perform your validation for you. If you're not using root 53, you'll just take that same exact name value key pair and add that as a CNAME record in whatever your domain registrar is. If you're using Route 53, this is super simple because you can just click create the record in Route 53 and click create. All right, so we've got a success message there. You just want to note this does say it can take up to 30 minutes to propagate. Now let's click continue. We'll come back once this says it has successfully validated. Once you see the status change to issued in green, then you know that you successfully created the SSL certificate. So in this quick tip, we're just walking through how to create the certificate itself, we'll walk through in future videos how to attach it to various services within Amazon. Please remember to like and subscribe. This really helps out the channel. Feel free to leave questions or requests in the comment section below. If you need help registering a domain in Route 53, or you'd like to set up a static website through an S3 bucket, I've got videos for both of those that I'll link in the description below. With that, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.